Yeah, there should be. Uh, Is there any uh, leftovers of the uh, former shades? Okay, let's start. The typically, yeah, so basically, this is, this is virtually the last lecture, hopefully. Um, and then we'll do a review next lecture, okay? Okay, um, so I'm passing around this formula sheet. So you will bring this formula sheet to the final exam. Uh, you're not supposed to write anything on the formula sheet except whatever is given already. So bottom line is, you look when you look at the formula sheet, you look at the each formula, you, you got to ask yourself, so what does it mean? Do I know how to calculate this? Okay? And uh, get to know the concept behind each formula. So you can't rely during the final and apply the formula, right? I don't see anybody's genius enough to do that in the final exam. So you have to be comfortable to be knowledge, knowledgeable regarding those formulas. Okay, is that a question asked somebody? Did you ask a question? Uh, I was just wondering if you still think you have to bring formula sheet if on yeah, you bring that to the exam. Yeah, I'll bring some too if you forget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing is, uh, lots of people started to review already, and uh, the first question when you ask me the question, lots many people ask the uh, question on the additional exercise. So that's good. But the first question you always ask back is, so did you review the assignments? Okay. Because your number one step to start is assignments. You've asked the sample exam questions, my assignment questions, okay, and the tutorial questions and the lecture notes questions. Those are my t sample ones. Uh, and the quiz, you know, some past exam, I put it in the quiz, okay. So when you're pretty comfortable with those things, then you can go on and exercise uh, through these uh, additional ones, okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's continue on a surface integral and uh, do a quick review on surface integral, okay. Uh, surface integral basically giving a vector field F and a surface S. And we're interested is in the concept called flux. So what a flux basically means is the amount of something represented by the vector field passing through this surface in unit time. Okay. So uh, ultimately we can express that uh, wording using this math expression. It's a double integral. It's integrating over the surface S, okay? So, you know, that when we learn double integral, we learn double integral over a certain region R, right? And the R is a flat in the XY plane. So now it's a double integral over the surface, which is inside the 3D space. So what are we integrating with? What, what are we in, with what's the integrand here? The integrand is F dot N hat. That's the integrand. F is the vector field. N hat is the uninormal vector to the surface. So f dot n hat basically is a projection of the f in the direction of uh, the perpendicular direction to the surface. Right, so that's integrand. And uh, what about integral variable? And that's determined by dA. So dA is a small patch uh, around that n hat. So this is basically uh, generate a question Okay, so what kind of a variable shall we use to represent this dA? Because it's in 3D space, not a planar case, just you know xy plane. So you could have a different option set here. And uh, what we went over in the last lecture is the first case is if the surface is a spherical surface, then what is the n hat? What is the dA? And this surface basically is a sphere centered about the origin. Then n hat is, says you could have uh, two directions. One is pointing out, the other is pointing in, right? So that's why it's positive and negative here. But uh, the magnitude is 1 over a okay, times x, y, z. x, y, z is a point coordinate, the coordinates uh, point on the surface. dA is a squared, a squared sine phi d phi d c. It's basically taking from the triple integral that uh, dV by getting rid of the rho, right? And the a the root square becomes a square. A is the radius of the sphere. Okay? Yeah. 
So this is what I'm saying when you when you're looking at the formula. You know what exactly does each one of symbol here represent? And x, y, z. So now you have a mix of x, y, z and phi and theta. So we have to put everything in uniform. So x, y, z will be replaced by these three equations here. So then basically you will not have x, y, z anymore. You will only have phi and theta. So this is the two variables you're going to integrate with. Okay? Yeah. We integrate over the whole surface. So you might not be giving a whole sphere, maybe a quarter, maybe a half hemisphere. Who knows, right? So, and uh, based on the actual shape of the surface, then you can determine the limits for phi and theta. The way to determine the limits for phi and theta is the same approach as you do for triple integral. Okay, so that's basically the idea. So the second case is a simple one: is when you have a plane z equal to a. So essentially, maybe you have a part of the, uh, not necessarily rectangular, but uh, you may have a plane or a patch of uh, uh, area uh, par uh, parallel to the xy plane. So if this is the case, then n hat is positive negative p hat, and dA is dx dy. The limits for x and y is based on the basic projection of whatever this uh, shape is inside this xy plane. So you determine this basic x and y limits based on the shadow, right? The projection in the xy plane. Okay? Yeah. And the third case is when you have a cylindrical surface centered about the z-axis, okay, then uh, your n hat is positive negative 1 over a x y 0. Okay? So this is 0 here. So it doesn't matter where you draw the n hat, okay? Maybe you draw it anywhere along this uh, 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 on the surface here, so z component is always zero. Okay, yeah. And dA is a d z d theta. Okay, if you compare to the cylindrical coordinates for triple integral, you will see the similarities. Z and the theta limits will be based on the actual shape of this uh, cylindrical surface. All right. Yeah. So that's the three cases we went, we, uh, went over in the previous lecture. And uh, now let's talk about the fourth case. Okay. And this is the last case uh, for surface integral. There's uh, two more in the lecture notes, so I'm going to make that as optional, OK? Yeah. So the third, the fourth case is we consider a surface in this format. So we have a surface z equal to f of x, y. OK, so when you have, when you see this kind of surface, we typically basically call this is an explicit surface. Okay, so this is a so-called explicit. <coughs> okay, so why is it explicit? Essentially, your your expression for z is explicitly given. That's well, that's why it's for example, you know, we have to deal with this uh, so-called paraboloid quite a bit, right? So this is a paraboloid. That's an explicit surface. Okay. Or sometimes we deal with uh, you know 25 minus x squared minus y squared is invert, inverted to paraboloid, or it's a cone, okay, like this. Right? Those are explicit. Okay? So implicit, which is the case number five, you can take a lecture notes. Essentially, you don't have uh, the equations for z explicitly. As a matter of fact. This, spher this is spherical surface, this one here. You look at this one here. Is that explicit or, uh, or implicit? This is implicit, right? Yeah. So now for the case number four, let's deal with this explicit surface. OK? Yeah. So basically means uh, I may have a surface given okay, inside the 3D space. And it could be either one of this. And we're interested in the surface integral or the flux okay, uh, through this surface. Okay? Yeah. So this is the S. So same idea. So then basically, if you look at um, the surface integral uh, formula, right? this is a surface integral formula. So what we need to figure out is F is given, so we don't need to worry about that. So what will be the n hat dA? For this case, number four, okay, number four case essentially. All right, yeah. So I'll give you the answer first, and then I'll roughly go over the the proof, okay. So without the, the details here. So 
n hat dA, okay, yeah, you will see that it's basically positive and negative, okay, fx, fy, uh, sorry, negative, negative here, 1, and dx, dy, or dy, dx, okay, so this is the answer that I will try, you are trying to, uh, I'll try to show you briefly, okay. So negative fx, negative f, this is basically negative partial f over partial x, negative partial f over partial y, all right? Yeah, that's what it means. So if you look at, uh, uh, compare a little bit, here's my surface, okay, z equal to f of x, y. So what do I need to do to, to get n hat dA? I need to calculate the partial derivative of this function f, or essentially, in this case, this is f of x, y. This is f of x y. This is f of x y. Okay? Yeah. So you need to calculate two partial derivatives to fit in the blanks for n hat d a. That make sense? Okay. In terms of calculation wise. All right. So once you have this now, then you basically plug it into the formula. So let's say my surface integral will become this f dot what dot this whole chunk right here, right? Dot this whole chunk. Uh, I'll, I'll use the only. I'll use only the positive bit here for for illustration. Only use the positive sign here, okay? <coughs> okay. So this is the um, uh, the results after substitution for n hat d a. Then. Right. Let's say the f is m n p. Okay. If f is m n p has three components, then this integral becomes this vector dot this vector. So what do we get? We get negative m times f x minus n f y plus p and d x d y. Right. D x d y. Now where where are we integrating now? So Say your original dA, right? Your original dA, okay? Your original dA right now is dx dy. So your 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 integration variable basically is dx dy. So the question is, how do I find this x and a y limits for this integral here, right? So where is the x, y then? x, y is in the x, y plane. So basically to find the x, y limits, so we need to look at is, is actually what? It's a projection of the s in the, in the x, y plane. Okay? So this is the shadow of the s in the x, y plane. Let's say this is r right here. Okay? It's r. So your, your x, y limits is based on the r here. Is that clear? Yeah. So in terms of the calculation, this is okay for the x for the explicit surface z equal to x x y. Your surface integral basically is the calculation from from here to here. Okay. Yeah. Your m and t will be given. Your surface f will be given. So everything can be calculated here. Then your x y will be based on the shadow or the projection of the surface in x, y plane, right? Yeah. So from here, the next step is, guess what? You can have, how many options can you go? You can use Cartesian or you can use polar, right? Okay, yeah. So nothing new from here, right? Okay. So if we are all clear from here, then the next question is this guy, you know, why n hat dA equal to this uh, big, big, uh, big chunk of the expression here, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to go into too much detail to derive this. I'll just show you some ideas behind this uh, derivations here, right? So I'm going to draw myself an arbitrary explicit surface. So suppose that I have a surface right here, okay? And then we're going to uh, basically take okay, 
a small patch on the surface. I purposely will pick a parallelogram, okay, that kind of a shape for this small patch. Okay, this is a parallelogram. Okay, yeah. Then I will have basically two sides of the parallelogram. I can compose two vectors, okay, for this parallelogram. So let's say suppose for this particular point, okay, for this particular point, if you project that particular point into xy plane, uh, this is a probably xy coordinate, okay, in xy plane. It's okay, right? Yeah. And if I uh, uh, project the other side, okay, basically if you project that into the xy plane, you get, you know, this is not in terms of a pr a precisely in proportion, but you get another parallelogram in the xy plane, right? Yeah. And more uh, precisely, uh, we're talking about small patch. So from this point up to here, let's say what I really want is just only a change in x directions from here to here. So for this coordinate, it's x plus delta x y. Okay, there's a very small change, right? Yeah. And from here to here, it's a small change in the y direction. Okay, yeah. So basically, there's a delta x, delta y change in each direction, right? From x, y location. Is that clear? Yeah. So then, if I extend this point up, 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 so that's where this end corresponding to the point on the surface. Here is where it is on a surface. If I extend this up, and this is where that point is on the surface. Is that good, right? So, then what is the coordinates for these three black dots? Let's say this is A, this is B, this is a C. So what's the coordinate of A? X, Y, F, X, Y, that's right. And B? is x plus delta x, y, and then f of, uh, that's right, right? So then c is, c is x, y plus delta y, f of x, y plus delta y, okay? So that's the coordinate for these three vertices here. Is that good? Yeah, so far, you know, it's, it's just some approximations, right? Yeah. Okay, then I can use the three coordinates here, the vertices, to form vector AB and a vector AC. That makes sense, right? So I'm going to call U is vector AB, and V is vector AC. So, how do we uh, form the three vector, the two vectors here? A, B is, you use this coordinate subtract, this coordinate, right? And B, A, C is, use the C coordinates, subtract the A coordinates, okay? So, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write that part now. But anyway, you, now you, you can see I can find U and V based on my current approximation approach. That make sense? Okay? Okay, so bear in mind what we're looking for. We're looking for n hat <coughs> dA, right? Looking n hat dA. So this is what we're trying to for, n hat dA. But I guess right now I would call it n, n hat delta A, right? I would call it n hat delta A, okay? So what is delta A then? Delta A is the area of this patch, delta A, right? That's delta A. Okay, so this is delta A here. What about the n hat? n hat is, according to definition, n hat is what? Is a unit normal vector to, to this guy here. Okay, so because this is small here, how can I create an n hat from here? Exactly, so you can create the n hat based on the ooh, 
based on this uh, cross product of u and v. So, back to the first lecture of this class. Actually, second lecture, probably. What is the area of the parallelogram given two sides of the parallelogram, the vectors of the two sides of the parallelogram? I wonder if you remember that. The delta A is equal to what? Exactly, U cross V, right? Magnitude. Okay? So, now you just said it. What is N hat? It's U cross V, and then what? And normalize it. Right? And normalize it. So, all together, what is the n hat dA? It's this multiplied by this, right? It's this. So, n hat delta A is this multiplied this, and you cancel this numerator denominator here, and you end up with just U cross V. That's n hat dA, right? Yeah. And what's a U, what's V? As I just said, and you know, I didn't write, U is basically by using the subtractions between the three coordinates, right? So if you do that, and you do the cross product, you know how to do the cross product, right? You know, basically uh, the determinant of that matrix. And you will find this quantity here. Okay, that's the idea. Is that good? Yeah. So without giving you too much detail, but you, you have the idea of how to uh, compute this one here. So basically this one will give you Okay, this one will give you this quantity. Okay? Yeah. Trust me, it will. So for this particular one here, you know, this is n hat delta a. So remember what do we do? We we actually using a vector, right? So we're using delta a vector to represent this one. So delta a vector has a, a direction indicated by n hat, has a magnitude indicated by its you know uh, area, right? Yeah, that's delta a vector. Okay? Yeah. It's all good? Yeah. So, but, you know, before I move on it here, okay, uh, let me basically, let's think in another, in another direction like this, okay? In another direction. Uh, let's, let's think about uh, the n hat here, okay? Let's, maybe I'll just add it as a comment. So first comment is about this n hat. So n hat is the uninormal vector to the surface. Okay? So now you think it back here from our class. Which class or which part of the, norm, uh, the, the learning point can give you, first let's forget about uninormal, can give you a normal vector to the surface? What can you do? You have the surface now. What can you do to the surface or to the function describes as surface to give you a normal vector? Sorry. What? What operation? Cross product? No. So he, he, here's the surface. Here's the surface. What direction is perpendicular to the surface? K direction. Well, it's just they're more they're arbitrary. It could point into you know different direction, not necessarily the K direction, right? What can you do basically? What operation? Gradient. What's the gradient? Here's the, what, what is the gradient direction pointing to? What's the physical meaning? The direction of greatest increase. So here's the surface, right? Here's the surface. You can define this surface as, okay, same thing. Was that right? Same thing. So this is a function, W. 
three variables, right? Three variables. This is W. This is called one level surface, isn't it, right? Because of zero. If I put it as a one or two or three, that's another level surface, right? But here is function W for this side here. If I calculate del W, the del W is a perpendicular to what? To this guy. Remember that, right? That's the gradient. Okay? Del W is the perpendicular to this one. And we're looking for is the union normal vector n hat. So the n hat should equal to okay. That make sense? Yeah? So what is the del W then? So here is W equal to Z minus f of x y. Then what is del W? Here. First one is partial W over partial X. You should end up with this is a del W, right? So what would be the first one? Exactly. Second one, negative. This. Third one, one. Okay? Yeah. So this is a del W. Then n hat equal to this vector <coughs> divided by its magnitude. So you end up with what? Okay? That's n hat. Okay? This is n hat. So I'm basically trying uh, to go into the details that are here. Although actually you don't really need to do this, okay? All you need is, I don't want to confuse you, I, all you need is n hat dA is this. Okay? Okay, that, you know, absolutely you have to remember, that's the part of the formula given. Okay, you have to know this. But now I'm breaking down n hat, basically what's n hat? n hat is this, right? n hat is this. So, if I break it down now, then tell me what would be the dA then? Yeah, so see, n hat dA, if I rewrite that, is equal to negative this, negative that, one d, uh, d what? D, dx dy, right? dx dy. Okay, this is n hat dA. Okay, so this is n hat. Then dA will be one over, oh, sorry, no, one over. What would be DA? Yeah. Does that make sense, right? That's DA. Because you see, if you use n hat times this DA, what do you get? You get this, right? You get this, okay? Yeah. That's DA. So why am I bringing this up then? The reason is, okay, even though we're not going to test this, the reason is there is another application is here's a surface. Can you calculate the surface area of this portion? Surface area. So how do I calculate surface area? So surface area basically means you're integrating over the surface. Integrate what? Integrate this dA, right? That gives you the surface area. So then all you need is let's plug this guy into here to get this so-called surface area. Okay? Was that clear? Yeah. So that's another very important application. Uh, but you know, I'm not gonna test this though, right? So for you, what you need to basically understand is if you don't like what I just did, just remember n hat dA is this. <coughs> And then you have to be able to, to uh, calculate the two partial derivatives, right? That would be all right, okay? Uh, one step further to understand behind is this sort of the proof and what n hat is, right? Yeah, what n hat is, okay? It's all good? Yeah? Okay, so that's basically the false addition here, the false case set here. Now, before we, we uh, uh, have an exercise here, let's uh, clarify another concept 
here, okay? Yeah. So another con uh, I'll put it as a comments here. The second concept is it. Say you see I have a two in head defined, right? One is I'll put this two right here. One is this, and that the other is a negative. Okay, the other is negative. So uh, the uh, the little bit of the danger or trick is okay. Uh, you you know basically you need to be careful before I, uh, maybe you know maybe I'll add it here one here okay yeah because I have seen that um, kind of what's going on here hmm? sometimes it's not moving down okay all right so properly rewrite the original. Uh, surface is important, okay? So for example, uh, I might give you a, a maybe a surface like this. Okay, let's see, giving a surface, okay, negative z plus, uh, I don't know, 2x squared minus y equal to 0. Okay, here's a surface. Okay, so then I ask you, uh, can you calculate the flux, okay, uh, the surface integral, through this surface, giving a certain vector field. Is that good? Right? So, you look at this one here, you know, your first step is to identify, okay, what kind of surface am I dealing with? It's not a spherical, it's not a cylindrical, it's not a plane parallel to xy, and this has to be uh, explicit, because I said that we're not going to test the implicit, right? So how do I rewrite this one into this format that we just learned here? You can't rewrite it like this. And then you said, oh, look, this is my f of x, y. Okay? What's wrong is here? Yeah, so you have to rewrite it according exactly to the format, okay? The z component part, this is a positive z here, okay? So this is a basically the sign difference. The reason is because you probably argue is, what's the big deal? You only have a basically a sign difference, right? Actually, no big deal because until the end, your answer, if you calculate right, your answer will be just a sign difference from mine. But the big deal is your answer is totally wrong, right? So the concept is wrong, right? Yeah. So this is what I mean the next comments here. The up component and the down component. Because when you have a surface, more often the, you see the question asked is, can you calculate like this? Calculate uh, the upward okay, flux, like this kind of language. Or maybe, can you calculate the downward flux? All right? So what does that mean? Upward or downward, right? So when you see upward, essentially means this. You have a surface, and you have an n hat. If the n hat has a positive z component, it's upward. So you see the direction n hat I'm drawing here. Is this upward or downwards? It's upward. Because n hat, if you project that into the z component, you have a positive there. So if you compare these two, which one is upward n hat? Which one is upward n hat? This one is upward upwards, right? Because the one, the z component is a positive here. And this is a downward because when you move the negative into here, that's the, the in head is a downward component. Yeah. What if you have like a semicircle or something? So it's like point up at one point and then down. A good point. So you're saying maybe you're dealing with is a probably a semi uh, circle like this, right? Let's see. So for the top portion, you know, you have n hat upward, then you have the n hat downwards, isn't it, right? Well, okay, so if this is the case, then what's the upward flux through this surface, okay? So for this one here, that's easy. It's just basically going to be that, right? Actually, for the bottom here, you actually, if you don't choose this n hat. This is the n hat I just drawn here. It's downwards n hat you're still going to have to choose this one here. So that n hat will be basically this, this way here. Okay? Yeah. So 
the bottom line is just remember the end head that you obtain here, you know, that has to this this part here has to be a positive value. That's upwards. Okay? Yeah. However, there's another trick here. Sometimes what you ask is, can you calculate the outwards flux? So I have a surface here. Can you calculate the outwards flux? Yes, you can. Well, of course you can. So in this case, outward basically means, you know, it's, it could be upward or downwards here now, right? And for spherical, it's always 1 over A, X, Y, Z. Okay? Spherical ones. Okay? So bear this in mind of the two tricky things here. One is outward, one, the other is upward or downwards. Okay? Yeah. And those are tip are directly related to the n hat that you chose. Yeah. So when we're calculating the bottom half of the semicircle, you say you just use the left hand side equation like normal? Yes, this is basically upwards. Even though that's pointing down. No no no. If you choose this, this is up pointing upwards. If you choose this, it doesn't matter what this value here is. That vector will definitely always has a upward components. No matter where it's located. No matter, right? So if you plug in any numbers, negative three, negative four, one, if you draw this vector, you will always have a positive z components. Okay. But on the other hand, this side here, if you, this is negative one, you will always have a downwards component. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for our words, you know, it basically that depends on the uh, the question and depends on the uh, surface. However, you know, as we learned for the spherical ones, spherical surface. Remember, for spherical surface, how many directions do we have for spherical surface? You got two, right? What is our word? Positive. For cylindrical. What is our word? Positive or negative? Positive, right? Yeah. Now, however, you know, if I, the question is this. So, you know, you got to basically treat it, uh, treat it uh, uh, one of the assignments, that, uh, the little assignments here. See, let's see here. I have uh, basically a sphere. I have a sphere and then basically an apple, which was bitten by a worm all the way through this apple, okay? So, the worm is so good, as you know, you have a cylindrical, <laughs> you have a cylindrical surface in, internally, and then you, it kept all the outside untouched. Was that good? Okay, so now the question here is, can you calculate the outward flux for this surface? How many surfaces do you have, for, first of all? Two. One is the cylinder, cylindrical surface. The other is the spherical. So let's say this is centered around the origin here, okay? So then, what's the outward n hat for the sphere? So see, uh, this is maybe A, and maybe this is uh, B. The radius of the sphere is B. The radius of the cylinder is A. So according to the formula, what's the outward? If I choose our flux, how do I choose the n hat? So n hat for sphere is what? Positive 1 over b x, y, z. And for the cylinder, you only have two choices, right? You just have to make one <laughs> decision. Still positive or negative? So in this case, what's the outward so you have a this is ours here right for this internal surface where is ours this is ours now right it's going out of this out of the region here okay it's going out of the region here so what will be the n hat cylinder for the cylinder it will be what negative 1 over a x y 0 okay does that make sense? So you got to basically treat it, treat it separately. So let me give you another example here. Here's a hemisphere. Okay, here's a hemisphere. 
And uh, so basically, the region is sandwiched between the hemisphere and the surface, x, y plane, right? So let's say this is x squared plus y squared plus s squared equal to a squared. So what's this uh, circle here? Was that right? That's a circle, right? Okay, so now if you're going to calculate the outward flux, the outward flux, so basically you're going to calculate you're going to calculate the surface integral. It's a closed surface now, right? It's a closed. So I use a circle here to represent a closed surface. So you're going to calculate this. The formula is what is a, uh, n hat dA, right? This is the formula. Okay? Because you have two surfaces, so in the formula here will be basically first surface is the sphere, and the other surface is the what? Yeah, the plane or the the bottom here, right? Not the whole plane though, right? Only this poor bottom surface. So, for these two surface integral, what will be the n hat for the sphere? And what will be the n hat for this bottom disk? Yeah. Good. And what's this n hat? Negative what? Sorry, louder. Negative key hat. Right? Okay. That's our word. Okay? So the, the wording determines the in hat, the choice of in hat. Okay. All good? Excellent. So now let's look at an example for the last question there, okay? Okay, so I have a vector field f equal to z p hat, and then we have a portion of a surface. So surfaces is z equal to x squared plus y squared, and z is between zero and one. Okay, so that's your surface, and calculate the flux of this f over this surface. Okay. I'll calculate the, uh, the flux, basically. Okay. okay. So again, uh, we, we have uh, come across this, uh, this uh, kind of surface quite a lot. And I mean, then you should know what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with is a paraboloid and uh, between uh, z equal to 0 and 1, right? And f equal to z k hat. Uh, if you can draw that, absolutely perfect. If you can't, that's fine. But anyway, if you look at this one here, uh, F, the vector field, the X and Y component for the vector field is always what? Zero. And there's a change when, when you have a change in Z. So basically, uh, at, on the XY plane here, it's zero. But then as it's moving up, the, the vector basically becomes bigger, right? That's the kind of vector field you're dealing with. Okay? So we're talking about the flux of this F through the S. Okay? okay, before we move on here, so let me ask a simple question. What do you think the calculation here is? Do you, is it going to be a positive? Is it going to be a negative? Or a zero? Or you don't know? Well, but you know, before you make a decision here, you know, we had, you've got to think about the presumption here, okay? When you see positive, you're, you're based on certain as, uh, assumption, actually. Yes, but you're calculating outward. Uh, outward, but this is a, not a closed surface, though. Oh. Right? Oh, I there's no top, sorry. There's no top, just uh, a portion of that, the paraboloid. Okay. Right? So just only through that, this, this surface S here. Through that. But it didn't say whether you're required to calculate upwards or downward. It didn't say that. So let, now let's put it, if it's an upward flux, is it positive or negative? Positive, right? Yeah. But if, a ne but if a, 
a, a, a downward flux, it will be a negative, right? Yeah. Okay. So assumptions, right? So you already, if you see in the final exam, I will tell you calculate the outwards, calculate the upwards, that kind of things. Okay. But there are some situations I don't need to see, like this situation here. I just say calculate the hours flux. You see, right? When I see hours, I naturally for the up for this hemisphere it's hours. It's positive, right? But then for the bottom here it means negative key hats. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, uh, if you don't see a sign like this, that's not a closed one here, right? Yeah. So usually, if uh, if I see hours and the surface is a paraboloid, and the top one is this z equal to one, that's clearly basically you have two portions there, huh? Yeah. But in this case, if just s is just this, nothing else, just this, right? Uh, giving a z limits, it's not a closed one. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's uh, exercise this one here. Uh, just see uh, how do we uh, uh, use the formula we just derived here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. N hat dA according to the formula, right? So we're talking about N hat dA. I'm not breaking it down. Okay, I'm not breaking it down here because this is just a calculation, right? So what's N hat dA according to the formula? So let's say I'm calculating upwards, okay? Upwards. According to the formula is negative fx, negative fy, 1 dx dy. Okay, so then here you gotta identify what is my function f of x y, right? What is the function f x y? So here is surface z equal to x square plus y square. So what is the function f of x y? This is f of x y here, right? This is f of x y. Okay, yeah. Then that means the partial derivative pretty straightforward. So negative here, two x negative 2y and 1 dx dy okay yeah then put it into this formula so f is 0 0 z dot what dot that n hat da okay so the the results that are here is sorry so this times this zero this times zero and then this times this just a z right okay just a z okay. so what happened here and what do I do with the z there exactly so what's the z here's a z right Here's that. Here's your surface, x squared plus y squared. So, so I'll put this s temporarily here. But the next one here, x squared plus y squared, and dx dy. But now, you only have x, y left now, right? And how do we determine the x, y limits again? It's based on the shadow of the surface in the x, y plane. So the shadow of the surface in the x, y plane as as given is, is actually is what? It's a circle, right? So basically you can use R instead of S now because that's where you determine the XY limits. Okay? And apparently you probably want to use what? The polar to do the next step, right? The polar coordinates. Okay? So polar coordinates means X squared plus Y squared will turn into R square. Dx dy will become R dr d theta. 
and r is 0 to 1 because the circle, and theta is 0 to 2 pi. Okay? Yeah. So the rest of the integral is fairly straightforward. Okay? So again, it's pi over 2. Okay? Okay? Yeah? Yeah. Was your formula then be uh, like a one in like the x plot and then negative f of z, negative f of y? If you wanted that to be the upward down direction? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch your question. So, what if I, what do you, sorry, what do you say? What if I wanted to calculate what? If you wanted the upwards and downwards like in a, a different direction besides the, the. Oh, you know. Okay, you can't be too picky here. When I say upward or downwards, I'm actually not necessarily, you know, literally means upwards or downwards. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm, all I'm pointing to here is the, is the choice of n hat. Because your n hat, you see, it's either this or that, right? Yeah. So your n hat, this is, has upward direction. So your, your flux ultimately is determined by what? Determined by this f dot n hat, right? Yeah. So when I say upward or, or uh, downwards, that really is, means it's a choice of the n hat there, OK? Yeah. Well, sometimes it literally means you know, going down and up like that, right? Yeah. But the vector field, you never know. Maybe the vector field is like this, right? Who knows? Upward is always this one. Downward is always this one. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So you can take a look at uh, the uh, lecture notes for a few more examples in terms of this one here. But, you know, ultimately, as you can see, um, really there's nothing new except to set up this. Uh, integral properly by plugging this one into this surface integral, right? Yeah. This is what I mean. Uh, at the end of the last lecture, you know, you you'll see applications of everything that we learned from this lecture, huh? Yeah, from previous classes. Okay. So let's move on to uh, two more important theorem. Okay. But we, before we start, let's start with the concept. Another concept here. It's called divergence. Divergence. So, how many operations have we learned so far? What do we call this? What do we call this? Curl. So this is the, th the third one here. We're gonna learn this. Okay. Okay. So this is called divergence of a vector field. Okay? So sometimes we write it as a DIVF. Just like this one, we write it as a CUR curl F. And just like this one, del F. Okay? Yeah. So what is the divergence? I'll give you the definition here. Okay? So the definition is this. Okay, so this is a definition. So let's examine this definition here. Let's see if you can get some uh, uh, physical meanings out of this uh, uh, math definition here, right? Yeah. So until you finish here. Okay. Now, so look at first of all, look at this one. What's this? Flux. And what do I, when we have this one here, we, we means this S is a closed surface, right? So, so when you have this one here, and this basically generally means it's a flux. Well, we don't know whether it's going to be flux. Uh, well, we don't know what, what the sign of this, right? So this sign could be positive, could be negative. If this is a positive, basically means well, it's a flux going, this is a closed surface outwards, right? 
If it's a negative, basically this means flux coming into the surface, right? Yeah. So now then what happens is you use this divided by the V. So delta V at here is enclosed by S. Okay, so delta V is enclosed by S. So essentially, if you if you draw an arbitrary here, there's, there's a close, uh, very small surface S enclosing delta V. And then you have a certain vector field inside this 3D space, right? So then we use this flux, whether it's outwards or going inwards, doesn't matter. So basically, it's all the, out of the flux through that surface S divided by its volume. Then you take a limit, let the volume go to zero, right? Go to zero. Okay, so if I change my concept here, if this is a mass over the volume, you let the volume go to zero, what do we call that? We call that mass density, right? Mass density. So now this is a flux over the volume, and then let the volume go to zero. So what should we call that? Flux density. Okay, flux density. So, del dot f, okay, or divf, give us a point concept, okay? This is a point concept. So basically, it's a concept at a certain point. Okay, so concept at a certain point. I'm not going to derive this. So deriving this is a bit of a tedious. It takes about another two lectures. So, <laughs> but I'll give you the formula. As you're going to see, it's very simple. Okay, it's very simple. Does this guy, the del dot this equal? Okay, if f vector is m n p. Okay, so then del dot f, or the limit, will give me this quantity partial m over partial x plus partial n over partial y plus partial p over partial z. Okay? Yeah. So that's what the del dot f or divergence of a vector field is. Okay? So that's divergence. Okay, the formula. See this one here, you know, everybody can calculate divergence, right? You have the formula. You know, just three partial derivative. Okay? Okay, so then, what does the physical, what's the physical meaning of divergence then, right? That's the part I think you should remember. So the idea still comes with the concept. If this is the flux density, and this is basically representing the, the flux going either in or out of this closed surface, right? If there's total flux is going out, as we be expected, we get a positive value. But if the total flux is actually going in after calculation, we'd expect to a negative value. So basically, the flux density, not like a mass density, we expect it to be could be either positive or negative, right? Either positive or negative. However, if you think it in terms of the basically, let's say I have a vector fields like this, and I have probably like this. And maybe I have something like this, okay? So, now let's think about this here. When you have this one here, what do you expect the flux density for this guy here? You would expect zero, right? Yeah, so there's even out here now, right? And for this one here, what would you expect? Exactly. And this one here, positive, right? So, in terms of a concept, now let's read it to concept called sink and source. Which one will be a source? This one, right? This one will be a source. And this one will be a, a sink. Okay? Yeah. So that's ultimately what del dot f will tell you. Here is a lake, right? Which part of the lake will suck you into it? Right? That's stink. Right? Yeah. Okay? And the lake won't give out something, but anyway. So, but if it's a water hose, right, you would expect there is a, a source, right? Like that. Okay? So, just understand this idea of the divergence. That's enough. Okay? Calculation wise, I think 
we all know how to calculate. Okay, so, sorry. Was that good? Okay, that's divergent, that's it. Right. So now let's talk about uh, two most important theorem. First one is called divergence. I probably will go over a little more detail in the next lecture uh, by through some examples, but uh, I'll give you the two theorem at it here, okay? In terms of the description of the two theorems, they're not too bad, okay? First is called divergence theorem, okay? Divergence theorem. So sometimes we call that uh, Gauss theorem. Particularly if you're a lecture student going to uh, learning EMAC, you, you will see this theorem quite a bit, okay? Yeah. So here's what this theorem is here, okay? If surface S, okay, if S is closed, Okay, it's a closed surface bonding a region D. Okay, bonding a region D here. So it's a sphere bonding a uh, spherical surface bonding a region D. Okay, with okay normal pointing outwards. So here you see it specifically tells you. The uninormal needs to be pointing outwards, okay? Yeah. And then they, we have a vector field, maybe M, N, P, given, okay? Yeah. So now the, the divergence theorem is this. Uh, maybe I'll just put another one here. So F okay, is differentiable over this D, okay. so basically it's continuous, okay? So it's defined over this whole region D. Then the divergence theorem says this. Okay, so what do we have here? This is what, the calculation of the flux. In this case, because the normal is pointing outwards, so this side is actually what we call what? The outward flux, right? and equal to this one here. Okay, equal to this. This is divergence. This is a, the, uh, uh, the divergence theorem. Okay, that works here. All good? So let's take a look at the theorem here. You know, um, you know, what's the advantages and what's the usage of this, right? So first of all, you, if you look at this side here, this is basically our flux. Okay, this is our flux. And uh, what about this side here? What are we integrating with? We're, what's the integrand in here? Del dot f, right? And we just learned del dot f refer to flux Density. We're integrating this flux density over where? Over this whole region D, the volume, the D there. The result is the total hours flux. That makes sense, right? You see? So you have, you know, basically you think about it. This is a surface enclosed certain region, right? At this location, maybe it's a sink. At this location, maybe it's a source. But when you put everything together, you get what? The total hour flux. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so anyway, um, now what's the usage then? So now you can see is, you see this. Now you probably sometimes say, I hate to calculate this surface integral because I don't know what n hat is, or I don't remember what n hat is now, right? But I like to do a triple integral. What's this idea? This is basically a triple integral. And this is just del dot f, which is uh, not a curl, <laughs> which is this, right? Okay, that's a scalar quantity, OK? Yeah. So you see the idea? Basically, sometimes it's easier to calculate this instead of this. Other than that, so there are some other applications you'll learn in the future, OK? So I'm not going to touch this. Uh, uh, at this stage now. But remember, this is a very important, okay, in terms of your future 
uh, studies. So let me give you a very quick example, then we'll move on to the next uh, here, okay? F equals that a key has, that's what we uh, used in the previous one there. And S is a sphere surface, spherical surface, yeah, spherical surface. So I wanted to calculate the surface integral over this S here. Okay, so I want to calculate. But I don't want to calculate, I want to use divergence theorem. Okay, divergence theorem. So if I use divergence theorem, what do I need to calculate first? I need to calculate what? The del dot f, right? The del dot f. Okay? So what's del dot f? f has only z component here. This is, a, what, what component is this? m, n, this is a p, right? This is p. So there's no m, there's no n, and p has only z quantity, so partial p over partial z is, so k hat, right? Del dot f. So then, based on the divergence theorem, okay, this is divergence theorem. So this del dot f is just key hat. Uh, sorry, I didn't know what I'm doing. Talking about. De de somebody crack me here. Well, what's del dot f? Is it key hat? It's one, right? It's one. It's not a vector, okay? Divergence is not a vector, it's a scalar, okay? So, what do I have here? Basically, I have 1 dv after using this divergence theorem. What's the volume? This is basically, what, what's this? This is basically the volume of what? A sphere, right? And the volume of sphere is, you don't need to calculate if you remember, so it's a 4 over 3, pi a cube, okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So sometimes it, it, it'll simplify your calculation quite a bit, okay? Yeah. Okay, so, and also some other cases it could be useful is this. Like one example, but I'm not going to do the calculation, but let's just see, I'll draw it here, okay? Let's say I have, a, I have a cube here. How many sides a cube? It has a six sides, right? So then if I ask you, can you calculate the hour flux of the cube? So what would you do? You, you're going to have to calculate what? S1, S2, and up to S6, right? Calculate the, fl the flux, you know, go through each one of the sides. But if you use divergence, it's going to be just uh, calculating a triple integral, right? Del dot f. Okay? Yeah. Save you a lot of time. Could. Okay? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Lots of application of divergence, right? Yeah. So for uh, a proper proof, you can take a little lecture notes, a couple of pages there. It's a bit too much. But uh, uh, now let me introduce the last one and uh, for the most important one. So we waited for a whole term. Uh, essentially, the last one is the highlight. Stokes theorem. So last uh, early this year, no, early, early this year, or yeah, I think early this year, uh, we had an interview of uh, our faculty. So one of the teaching topic given to the faculty is to teach in 15 minutes of this Stoke theorem. So three guys showed up. In my point of view, since I teach this course, and I was there, and uh, I don't think anybody did a good job here. Okay. And this is actually one of the reasons we picked the topic, because it's a difficult one. Okay. So you'll see, um, in terms of calculation, it's a simple, okay? but it's explaining it, it's uh, not that simple. So let S be a smooth surface, okay, bounded by curve C, okay, bounded by curve C. So what does that mean? Basically, here's a surface. 
and the surface has a curve C as a bond. Okay. You see this, right? This is what it means here, right? Yeah. And then here comes Stokes theorem. Behold, yeah. So F dot dr. What's this? This is a <coughs> what do we call this again? <coughs> line integral, right? This line integral integrating over the curve C equal to this. Okay, equal to this. All right. So before I move on here, let me write down one more sentence here, okay? So this is important, so you, you have to uh, basically be careful. Curve C and the surface S needs to be oriented compatibly. Okay, so I'll explain what this means here, okay? Yeah. Was that all good? Okay, so now let's take a look at this beauty out of here. Okay. Yeah, I, I have no idea how they come up with this uh, this formula, but it is just uh, uh, so neat. So, first of all, okay, let's let's look at this uh, uh, look at this idea of this so-called compatible compatibility here. So, what do we mean by compatibility? Is this? The curve C and, and the S is incompatible basically means they have to satisfy this right-hand rule. <coughs> okay, right-hand rule. So, curve C has a direction of going, right? It could go uh, clockwise or it could go counterclockwise. Was that right? How about the, the surface S? How, what, what do we use to represent orientation of a surface S? Normal vector, right? So basically when we see, satisfy the right hand rule, basically we, we're saying is the, or, the, 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 uh, the orientation of the curve C or the direction of curve C and the n hat need to satisfy this right hand rule, okay? So direction of C and n hat basically, okay? right hand rule. Now here's a different ways of satisfy this right hand rule here, okay? Right hand rule. Uh, one simple way is this. If you have a curve C and whatever included by curve C is the surface S, right? Is the surface S. Then using the right hand rule essentially curve your finger as the direction of the curve C, then the thumb direction is the n hat. Okay? So in this case, for this surface S, the n hat is actually pointing where? Right? This way. Okay? Was that good? That's n hat. So the idea basically is if I wanted to, if you look at this, this calculation here, if you look at this formula here, right? Giving a curve C, if I wanted to calculate, not calculate this, but calculate this side here, I have to be able to pick an n hat in order to calculate, isn't it, right? So that's the reason. You, you got to pick the n hat by this compatibility. Okay? Yeah. So this is n hat here. Now what about uh, if I have a, like the curve C like this? Like the one like this. Okay, if this is a C direction. Okay, this is a C direction. You also use the right hand rule. So this is what you can do here, okay? Try to use the, uh, uh, the, the thumb points to the direction of the C. And the index finger is the tangent to the surface S. Then the middle finger is n hat. See if you can you know, <laughs> no pawns taking, you know, basically you see 
this is a cur uh, thumb direction. This is the direction of the tangent to the curve C. Then doesn't matter where, okay? So then that finger is finally some good use. It's the n hat direction, okay? So tell me what where's n hat pointing to in this particular case? This is your n hat, okay? This is your n hat. Was that good? No? Yeah? You need a little bit uh, uh, things here, okay? Now uh, sometimes I can also, uh, uh, well, I, I probably not. So let me give you a more wicked case here. You, maybe you can, uh, uh, you can uh, practice. Now how about if I have a cylindrical surface, okay? I have a cylindrical surface, basically this is a cylindrical surface. And if I want the n hat for the surface to be outward, to be this n hat this way. So there are two bonds or two curves bonding this surface here. What will be the direction for C1 and C2? Use your right hand rule. So the, the C1, right, the thumb has to be the direction of the C1. And the index tangent to the surface. Then the middle finger is the end hat. So now the middle finger pointing out, right? So for the bottom here, for the bottom C1, you, you move like this, basically, you see, right? Where's my direction of C? If you're looking from upward, from, from up, from the top, the C1 is clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Okay. So what about C2? The middle finger pointing out. The index finger is tangent to the surface. The thumb is the direction of the curve C2. So guess what? C2, if you look from the top, it will be where? Right? It will be this. Okay? Okay, so the orientation is the key part of this one here in order to calculate the cap carefully, uh, cap uh, 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 correctly, all right? Okay, so in the next lecture, I'll uh, talk a little bit details in the, for this smooth stone and then give you a theory and then I'll distribute it. Then I'll uh, do a quick view of the whole lecture. I didn't want to bother. Right hand, that's it? Yeah. This is right hand, right? Yeah. So you did like a coordinate XYZ. Oh, okay, it's just your XYZ for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, yeah, so you know what you're going to click. This is the curve C, right? Yeah. So, thumb goes this, the direction of the curve C. Yeah. Index finger, maybe the surface, tangent to the surface. Okay. The middle finger is the direction of the surface, the normal axis direction. Yeah? Okay, I think I get it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I did that, I did that quiz today, this week. Yeah. And um, so I got the review, so I got this one here. Yeah, quiz. Yeah, the quiz. Oh, okay. So I got this card here. Yeah. And I, took, I, I separated like this. So that, that was where it was all the integrals, so that's like the same way. Then I was thinking about it, and I realized that if I did like use stuff, same thing, I'd be like, yes, okay, I'm just going to be answering like this. Uh, I don't remember, what was the question again? Um, it was like, it's like find, 